is my daughter, Abigail. Uh, we've been asked to share some advice uh, to help out other families. So I've just decided to share my family's story with the hope that our story can in turn help your family. So Abby, unfortunately, uh, was born and immediately was rushed to sick kids without us knowing of any heart issues beforehand. We were actually told we had a perfect pregnancy and she had her first open heart surgery at 14 hours old. Um, so it didn't give me a lot of time to look for coping strategies and different ways to deal with this enormous stress all of a sudden put into our lives. Leading into her... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Leading into her third open heart surgery, um, my husband and I decided we needed something else to help us cope with this huge step. Um, so we are not very religious, and my husband um, decided that maybe if we started paying it forward as a coping strategy and help providing some positive energy, that it would get us through this difficult part of her journey. So what turned into a small coping strategy for ourselves, of paying it forward and helping us stay positive and thinking of others while we were going through something difficult, um, started to grow. And it grew into other people starting to pay it forward to others. And it turned into Abby inspiring our community and others um, just to be nice to each other. And that really gave us Abby's purpose. That her purpose was to help create a positive atmosphere, help others, inspire others to be nicer to each other. And whatever the future has in store for her, we know why she was given this special heart and why she's here today. And it's been to really to inspire people and just help make the world a little bit of a nicer place. There's so many different purposes of why you have your special child. Um, and it's just finding that purpose. Everything, I believe everything happens for a reason and once you find that reason, it just makes it a little bit easier. So I hope that we can help <laughs> you with your journey. Right? Yay, can you do kisses? Good girl. <laughs>
I asked the same question probably to 20 different nurses. Every shift change, I'd say the same things. If I didn't get it yet, if I wasn't comfortable with it, if it was something that was bugging me but the answer just didn't sit right, being able to talk to the staff and being able to express my concerns actually got answers and got, um, got things looked into because sometimes you know your child and they don't see what you see. So asking it repeatedly was huge. Uh, the third way that I really encourage connecting is connecting with other parents here. Um, once we began this journey, our first stay on 4D, we were here I think three days. I met no one, I spoke to no one, and we basically ran away after. Um, but the next time we were here, I met a group of moms that are, they are the only people that understand what I'm truly going through and being able to understand what they're going through and just sharing our experience. Uh, even my husband doesn't get it the same way as they do. And we found once leaving 4D, once leaving the hospital and trying to get back to real life, some of your best friends still feel distant because they just don't get this life the same way. Um, so building that kind of a support group is huge. And then the last way I encourage you connect is if you are uh, on a journey like ours where the outcome is not that, uh, um, I don't know the right word, but where it's just you're really unsure what the future is going to be. I do encourage to connect with your child. Um, having lost a child already, uh, connecting with Evan was very scary. Um, we, like I, when she was first born, I wasn't sure if I should even buy the next size of clothing. So for us, that was um, a very scary journey. And if, if that's the type of journey you're on, I encourage you to kind of put that aside and try not to focus on that and live for right now and connect because there's so much that you gain from meeting and learning about your child. So I hope that's good enough or helps um, and good luck. Jansen, a parent of seven children. I have a six-year-old son with hypoplastic left heart syndrome and I also had a son born with trisomy 18. Between them they spent about 10 months in the CCU and many weeks in the heart center. It was a long and challenging journey for me and my family and I'd like to share some advice that will hopefully help other parents who are going through a similar experience. First I'd say be involved in your child's care and ask lots of questions. Empowering yourself with knowledge allows you to be a better advocate for your child and it enables you to make informed decisions. Also, having strength is crucial and the support of others will help to give you that strength. Tell people what you're going through so that they are aware. So talk to your neighbors, people in your church or school community, colleagues at work. The more people that know, the more help and support you're going to get. Utilize the services offered at SickKids and in your community. Social workers, lactation consultants, music therapy, and the PAC team are just a few examples. These services are in place to help and support you and they will make you and your child's experience in the hospital a more positive one. And finally, communication and trust with your child's healthcare team is vital. And the best way to enhance this is to voice your concerns, share any information you may get from a secondary source, such as about kids' health, and ask if you need anything clarified or answered. Dealing with just one doctor made, also made a huge difference for this. Hi, my name is
is Melanie McBride, and this is my beautiful family. It's my, our daughter, Kaylee McBride, my husband, Robbie, and our heart warrior, Chelsea. She was born in May of 2011 with tricuspid atresia, hypoplastic right ventricle, and a small VSD. Around one, she was also diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Just one piece of advice that I have that helped me through all of our multiple stays here at SickKids was to make friends. I spoke with people and honestly, whoever talked back became my best friends. And one mom that I met, we became lifelong friends. She lives out in New Brunswick, but we created a Facebook group to keep in contact with some of the other families we met. And it turned into like a huge support group now, and it's called Hearts of 4D, Sick Kids Toronto. And we're one big happy family now, big heart family. And so please don't be afraid to talk to people, make friends, don't be shy. That's what helped me get through everything because my husband was at home working, had my daughter Kaylee with him. So I was alone and I had to make friends, otherwise time gets very lonely and very long. So don't be shy, make friends. Hi, I'm Caitlin. Um, you might remember me from last year's video. I spoke about the people and resources available for families with my daughter Alentia in my lap. Unfortunately, Alentia is not here with me today, at least not physically. Um, right before her first birthday, she passed away while waiting for a heart transplant. And we actually had a lot of support from the nurses and the doctors, and one team in particular was the PAC team. Um, the pediatric advanced uh, care team. <laughs> uh, as soon as parents hear that name, they automatically go into such a frenzy and there's just so much anxiety. And I'm here to basically tell you that there's no reason for that. Uh, they provide so much support and so much care. I mean, these people have the biggest hearts. Aside from the nurses, the doctors, everybody here, they have the biggest hearts and they drop everything to make sure that they're there for you when you need them most. Um, we became such good friends with them over, I mean, we, we only knew them for about a week before she passed. And we talked about things like pain management and what to do worst case, worst case, best case scenario, you know, and it just becomes a sort of one of those things where you look at it and go, okay, this, this isn't as scary <laughs> as I thought it would be. Um, you know, Adam and Lori were there for us the day that she passed. They came in first thing in the morning and they spent their time with us and Lori was great. She was awesome. She spent time with my stepson. She spent time with my husband and I and, you know, she and, and her nurse gave her a little bath afterwards and made her smell like ice cream because that was her favorite thing. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, we did little keepsakes. I mean, packed, you know, they, they don't just, it's not just doctors and nurses that are saying, okay, this is it. It's doctors and nurses and social workers and chaplains and pain management and just everybody coming together as a team to make sure that you know what's available and how things are gonna go and help you kind of establish what to do when things happen, if they ever happen. In a way, my husband and I, and my stepson as well, we all wish that PACT has, had been involved right from the very beginning because there's such a support and they were able to, they came in literally every single day to come and check on me and Alentia to make sure that we were doing okay. And I think a lot of families need that and they need to make sure that they're not scared, they're not anxious and they're not freaking out over the fact that, oh my God, the PACT team is coming. It's not always the end of the world. They're there to help you just like everybody else. And I'm hoping that by sharing our experience with them and Alentia's experience, that other families will open their hearts and their lives to the people in the PAC team. I was born with the heart defect tetralogy FLO 
and at about eight months old I had my first open heart surgery to correct the tetralogy and about three years ago when I was 17 I had my second open heart surgery for a valve replacement and I will continue to need the valve replacement surgery every 10 to 15 years. Growing up I felt no different than any of my other classmates. The only thing that set me apart from my classmates was my scars which at first I will admit I was weary about because I mean no one else had them but honestly the scars have completely grown on me. I think they're a part of who I am. They're just a story of how I survived and they're a story for all of you other kids or adults with congenital heart defects. My parents never treated me any different than my siblings or my friends or even really told me I was different. I just grew up thinking I was the same for the most part. And that I'm sure really helped because I really forget myself sometimes that I didn't have a congenital heart defect. I was a very active child. I loved going to my cottage and running around outside all day. We'd play soccer in the grass, we'd swim, we never were inside. I did sports. I tried basketball, soccer, skating. Um, I danced. I danced my most of my life all through since I was like three or four. I, I have been dancing and I just stopped when I came to university three years ago. When I turned 18 and had to transfer over to the Toronto General Hospital, it was a different experience, but it was quite simple. Um, Sick Kids and Toronto General do everything for you. They set it all up. TGH will call you with your appointment. They'll send you emails and paper copies of where your appointments are, what time, where you need to be, how you need to get there, and it really is a breeze. Transferring hospitals, although at first is kind of weird because you're so used to sick kids, is actually kind of a fun experience because you get to become independent in your own way. You get to learn new things. You get to say everything you heard from the doctors to your parents and to whoever else wants to know how your appointments went. And it really, it's a fun experience. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.